So I guess, I mean, being a doctor in the army uh, for 17 years, uh, saw a lot of male patients, um, particularly in the regiments that I ended up uh, just happened to serve with. A lot of them were teeth arm units. Um, and there was there was my key patient who, bless him, I've asked him whether or not I've been able to discuss on various uh, platforms and, and he's always been very comfortable with it. But essentially, first time I meet him, uh, incredibly gregarious, sort of alpha male, had a beautiful family, was a uh, big rugby player. He walked into a room and you noticed it and he was um, always getting in trouble but talking his way out of it and just, you know, <laughs> a bit of a white boy um, and just really enjoyed life. And yeah, he was very excitable and had loads of energy. Uh, fast forward just over 10 years and he I saw him on my clinic list and I was like oh this is gonna be amazing and I didn't even look at his notes before he came into the room and uh was expecting him to sort of bounce in the way he always did and thought he'd done sort of silly injury somewhere doing something ridiculous <laughs> usually under the influence of alcohol or something and he sort of I don't know, he just looked really miserable. He grey clouded into my office and plonked himself down on a chair, barely looked up to sort of say hi. And I was like, you all right, how's it going? And I took a quick glance at his notes thinking, is this the same guy? Uh, he'd gained weight. He had real sort of central um, obesity. Uh, shoulders were just folded forward. I looked back through his notes and did a quick skim back through and there were three or four pages worth of different antidepressants, some lots of failed, like failure to attend appointments. Um, the mental health department had discharged him because he hadn't bothered going. Um and he just looked utterly miserable. I looked back through his bloods and, you know, he had a thyroid checked. He was pre-diabetic at this point. Um, didn't look like he'd seen the inside of a gym for a long time, which was very surprising because he was always really keen in his fizz. Um, and I could barely get eye contact with him. And it was heartbreaking. It was just really sad. And I sort of asked him about how his wife was and how his kids were. And he, was, he always got this like real sparkle in his eye when he spoke about his family. And he just said things weren't very going very well at home. And again, this was really surprising. And I was like, well, you know, he was in, he wasn't even in uniform, which again was odd. Um, and I noticed his rank and he didn't look like he's a progressed as far as I was expecting to. And I didn't really know what to do with him. Yeah. <laughs> I was a bit stuck. And I did what all good G GPs do, which was uh, buy myself a little bit of time by saying, should we do some more bloods? And on a complete whim, I tagged on a testosterone onto the end of it. I didn't do anything else. I just did a total testosterone. Didn't even really know much about free testosterone at that point. And um, I booked him in for a half hour review the next time I saw him. And luckily checked the testosterone levels before yeah. he came back in. And I saw that it was, well, it wasn't low by the values that I saw but it was low um, and did a bit of googling and realised I still didn't know very much spoke to a, a, another doctor who was an endocrinologist and he said no, no that's fine and I kind of it just didn't quite feel right so lots more research later I realised that it was low and um, we tried them on some gels actually and that partially improved things and then I started getting in contact with the British Society for Sexual Medicine and seeing what their guidelines were and realised actually we were low we just weren't low according to those local, local guidelines um, and fast forward on he ended up receiving more treatment than that and uh, ended up leaving the military and became or got treated by a civilian uh, men's health clinic after that and did significantly better um and that was my first thought of oh god how many other people have mm. i failed to treat by not knowing yeah. and that kind of led to my interest in